live from the sewers, this is the Turtle Power Podcast. This is your audio source for all the news, reviews, and insight into the world of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Now join your hosts, Brian, Alex, and Darby. Now it's time for the Turtle Power Podcast. This time it's going to work. Welcome, everyone, to episode eight of the Turtle Power Podcast. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, wow. This is going to be an interesting one, folks. (laughs) I have, okay, nothing prepared here. Um, uh, Hi, I'm Ryan again. Uh, your host of the uh, Turtle Power Podcast. Uh, with me, as always, are uh, you guys. What's your names again? I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we got Darby and uh, Alex in the house. In his house. We're not uh, even at your house. Do you no. remember your uh, your catchphrases? I don't have... You had. I'm the only one with a catchphrase. You guys can't even claim to have them. I'm the only one with one. <laughs> oh. Bossa Nova. There it is. You, you were gonna do Gungula. I was gonna yeah, do I said you should do Gungula. I don't like Gungula anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm still the only one to not have the Booyakasha button pressed on that. Welcome to the Bye. Turtle. Power podcast. What is this? <laughs> straight from the sewers. This is a audio source for all the news. Am I being punk? Okay, so we have some technical difficulties over here, but we're okay. We're okay. Oh man! Uh, I think I think Ryan had his first taste of beer tonight. <laughs> <laughs> hey, if you go back to the original uh, comics. Uh, I don't remember who it was. I think it was Raphael, probably because he would do this. But he was asking April for beer, and so that makes it legit for me. So okay. I guess it was Raph. That'd be my guess if I had to guess one. Yeah, I, I would guess that too, but I wouldn't guess he would be drinking Heineken. Uh, well, no, not Heineken. He'd be drinking, you know, at least some decent beer. I mean, <laughs> hey, I, water I, than I, like I said, I only got Heineken because 007's coming out. Right. Well, I'm not a I'm not a uh, beer uh, snob. I'm I'm more of a beer enthusiast. So, oh yeah, I'm I'm I I fall for all the sponsorship stuff. I'm terrible. You're a consumer. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this episode of Turtle Power Podcast is brought to you by Heineken. <laughs> <laughs> That would be nice. That would be nice if anybody from Heineken's listening. I don't know if a beer company would want to be associated with us. Yeah, I know I not. wouldn't. Why not? Jason Biggs is associated with the ten Good point. Good point. Although I was I was pretty drunk uh the first podcast episode we ever did together. So I think I, I'm assuming the viewers or the viewers oh god. The uh, listeners <laughs> got that. <laughs> Cause I yeah. still got that. <laughs> Everyone's like Yeah. And <laughs> all right, uh, I'm gonna try to uh, not be a. Uh, what did your What did your friend say, Darby? Um, yeah, a a guided meditation uh, leader. <laughs> yes, yeah, so I'm going to try to not be a guided meditation. You have a brilliant future in that field. Should you ever not make it in the podcast industry, in, in case the whole aerospace engineering slash podcasting thing doesn't work out 
I could always be guided uh, meditation. That's where the money is, man. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, so let's kick this show off right. Uh, thanks to all of our. Uh, Go out to all of our new followers on Twitter and Facebook. Um, man, I mean, it's literally every day we're getting more and more. So uh, thank you um, for uh, for tuning in. Um, hope, uh, you know, you enjoy some of the news that we break on the, uh, on the old Twitter there. Um, and special thanks out to um, Mr. Former Raphael, current Donatello, Rob Paulson. Um, he... Uh, yeah, he sent us a little retweet of uh, one of our tweets. So it was a uh, interview was that? interview that um, he was in with Greg Sipes, um, a video interview that apparently no one told them about. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I, I I was the first one to let him know. So he tweeted it out, and then of course, then when he tweeted it out, it got like. You know, a bunch of retweets and everything didn't come back to us. That's fine. That's cool. Whatever. Um, but right. uh, yeah, no, it's cool. It's it's cool. But uh, may, shout you know, out to may, him because I know he's listening intently. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. He is, but he is voicing the best turtle after all. Well, he used to. I think you're confused. He used to voice the best turtle. No, no, he currently does. No, Sorry. no, 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 no. I'm not confusing uh, it. No, I did that. I just did it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, let's get into uh, the news. April O'Neil, Channel 3 Eyewitness News. We got news. Yeah. Nice. I like yeah. that one. That was good. Thank you. Uh, um, <laughs> uh, the news in the Turtle Power Podcast is brought to you by Samuel Adams. <laughs> <laughs> is that what you're having? Mm. I'm actually having a, a cheap beer uh, Miller Lite um, because uh, somebody brought it over, and it's got the Vortex. It does make it. Oh good. yeah, yeah, Vortex bottle. Just the just standard Miller Lite. Uh, standard Miller Lite. Uh, yeah, you know I gotta watch. Uh, you know my calorie intake. I got a you know wedding coming up. So. Wedding. Yeah. You guys need to start drinking real beers, man. It's just. I normally drink. No, look, look. I normally I normally drink <laughs> real beer. I don't drink Heineken. Miller Lite. It's free. It was in my fridge. So. Like that's that. a, you know what the best kind of beer is, free beer. Free beer. Yeah, that's right. Absolutely. <laughs> um, but well, what are you uh, drinking there, Mister uh, Snobby? Yeah, exactly. That's what I thought. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm trying to be a professional and not come to work intoxicated. <laughs> I'm not intoxicated yet. Um, yeah. so first I actually, story, I actually work at a bar and I'm the only one not drinking right now. I'm surrounded yeah, by Yeah, what's up day. with that? Yeah, that's, doesn't make sense, man. You gotta, get the, you gotta uh, know your product. Yeah, you gotta get like a goodie bag. Yeah, I'm well aware of my out. product. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. So, uh, before we go off, uh, on a whole other tangent, um, first news bit, um, new girl, anybody watch that show? Besides me and my wife, do you guys watch it? No, Brian. Um, I I like uh, Zoe Deschanel. Yes, uh, but um, I don't watch it uh, because You're I don't terrible. like to hear her talk. But I Aww. do like her face. Come on, better seen, not heard. <sighs> I concur. Okay, well, for anybody that does watch New Girl, because that is a brilliant show, uh, great writing. Um, there was a uh, a new re- relatively new character on there that uh was dressed up uh as a ninja turtle on their Halloween episode uh, and actually the outfit was um i guess sewn sewn is that the proper term for something that was you know homemade sewing whatever yeah yeah um, <laughs> uh by Zoe de Chanel's character Jess um uh yeah so uh she made it for him and well, it was Raphael it was just red so um, well, I mean it, I mean, it could be Raphael, depending on sure 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 let's, good let's, point, good let's point. not get too ahead of ourselves here yes. okay uh, <laughs> um there was no weapons involved so uh yeah, there was there's no other distinguishing uh, well then maybe he was Venus de Milo 
<laughs> no, Venus, is, there's definitely. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> There's so definitely cyan, uh, no red cyan. version of Venus de Milo. So. No, no, it was cyan. I might yeah, yeah, I guess it was, it was cyan, light blue. Is there a difference? No, no. Yeah, there is a difference, actually. Uh, Carolina? <laughs> what? I always knew it as Carolina blue growing up. No, no, up, no. It's, you know? it's not Carolina blue. It was cyan. Just cyan. It was so cyan. Yeah, Carolina blue is its own thing, man. I don't think anyone else is really allowed to use that, that color. Isn't it copyrighted by them or something? I, I, I think UNC has, has, like, yeah, has rights to it. We just got color. sued by the University of North Carolina. <laughs> <laughs> um, hey, if, if you want to take the uh, negative $5 I have in my bank account, they're more than welcome to it. <laughs> Big baller. Um, so... Um, yeah, anyway, it was cool. It was a nice little. Uh, there was some actually some pics that leaked out on the internet about uh, about this episode, so it was kind of cool to see it uh, in action there. Uh, news item number two, and I didn't actually include this in our notes, but I like totally forgot to uh, include it because I, I don't think we talked about it in the last episode. But um, the annual. Um, uh, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles annual comic that we talked about a while ago um, uh, just recently came out. It's the Raph and Casey kind of side story that was uh, done by uh, Kevin Eastman. Um, and a Darby, you're our resident uh, um, uh, IDW expert. Um, did you get a chance to check this out yet? Is it digital? Well, I don't I even not. know if it's available for, I digitally. I have not checked out the comic because you didn't put it in today's notes. So I didn't. You know. I know. Had I actually been prepared properly, I would have come prepared. <laughs> All that uh, negative five dollars in in the account, right? Yeah, you know, it's got to go somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> um, yeah, it's it's you know a little bit longer. It's you know it's a um, it's not a. Uh, you know, standard, like, you know, single issue size. It's a little bit bigger. Um, I'm, I'm pulling it up now. Here it is. It is available um, <laughs> digitally. Uh, it's seven ninety nine uh, digitally. Uh, it's 64 pages. Um, came out on Halloween. So, um, yeah, yeah. You know, I, I just I just on a side note here, I just hate digital copies. Can I just say that? Really? I really do. No, sure. Why? Why do you hate the digital? There's, there's just something. I don't mind it if you want to have a second copy on your on your mobile device or whatever it is you're using, just to kind of have while you're on the go. But there's something about having a hard copy of any kind of book, uh, regardless of whether it's comic or, or like you know, it just there's just something about it uh, that just it just means more. There's more value to it, both sentimentally and I think uh, as far as you know, money goes down the line, it's not like you can you know. It's not like it's a collectible as far as if, if it's a digital. You can't turn it. Hey, I got, sure. I got this. I got issue number seven on you know my iPhone. You know it's, it's collectible. No, nobody does that. You can't do that. No, no. So uh, you know I just I, whatever. I'm the only one actually reading the IDW franchise. You guys hey, suck. <laughs> that's fine. That's fine. But but I mean, but would you agree that would you rather have a hard copy or would you rather have a digital copy? Uh, for me right now, it's I'm you know. For me, I'd rather take the digital copy. I understand your point of view. I totally get it, and I, I'm in, I'm in agreement with you on it. But with me right now, where I'm at in life, you could just I'm pull a, pretty, uh, a Kanye. I'm pretty nomadic. I'm pretty nomadic, and I, I don't live in one place for very long. The, the like less stuff I have, the better for me right now. Sure. Okay. And, and that's that. You know what? It works out perfectly for that. Yeah. I, I get that point of view. I definitely get that point of view. I just think, uh, I, 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 it's something you can hand down later on. Like you know, I, I got, you know toys handed down to me when i was a kid you know and i think i think comic books would be a, a, a great thing to to hand down you know I, i'm not following the new idw series you're the only one that is uh for sure so that's why you are the uh, the current resident <laughs> idw expert but um you know i just i just think there's uh, there's a lot more value and uh you know to to the actual hard copies as opposed to digital copies i uh no what i will say is that i've got Several of both. Mm-hmm. I've got a lot of hard copies, and I'm in, increasing my digital copies. Um, 
what it's what's tending to happen with me though is that all of my hard copies are from like collected works um you know uh, you know omnibuses and what and whatnot um because comic book stores for me um at least in my experience uh when i was up in maryland i was able to get some uh you know hard copies relatively easily uh, for a little while um but then after a while they just kind of I don't know. You had to, you know, they wanted you to get a subscription to get a copy. Right. Um, and then you know, a lot of comic book shops are starting to do that. I, right. I, I hear that. And, and, and the cool convenience factor of having it on a mobile device or is, 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 is nice as well. It is. And uh, what I will say also um, to your point, as far as handing down, um, you, know, it, you know, when we have a kid, you know, I fully expect them to <laughs> read Ninja Turtles comics and uh, like several other comics. But um, and, you know, we don't have a kid yet. But, <laughs> <laughs> right? but um, uh, I know with my other friends that have kids, um, they're all addicted to iPad. Um, they all, I mean, they all just go crazy with iPad. Like all my friends had an iPad. Now it just belongs to their kid. So, um, yeah. if, I mean, it's amazing how young, uh, children are and they can totally, you know, control an iPad and do everything with it. So, you know, the idea of them being able to, uh, you know, read, you know, digital comics is, I think definitely there as well, uh, even at a young age. So, right. um, you know, it's, it's just kind of the way of the future, I think, um, and I'm all about to, I mean, I worked in the technology industry for a little while. Uh, so I, you know, I, I agree with that. And, and kids are definitely drawn. I mean, I had parents, you know, I used to work with, you know, with, with Verizon and I had parents coming in and buying iPads for their 10 year olds. They were yep. buying straight up iPads for the 10 year olds. Uh, and I get it. I get that. That's where, that's where everything's heading. That's where everything's moving towards, but we can't forget about, you know, we're, you can't keep digital copies forever. You can't. People trade in their iPads every day. I mean, I guess you could back it up, but eventually, I mean, it's your hard drive goes bad, something goes bad, something goes wrong, your digital copy's gone, you still have your hard copy. Anyway, I guess we can move on from the top. That's just how I feel. I, Download we can, afterwards? We can move forward. I just I just wanted to get that out there. I, 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 prefer a, like, I prefer hard copies as opposed to digital copies, and I will always be that way. Yeah, no, I mean, it's certainly nothing wrong with it. I mean, I think that there's enough of a market to keep them around. Mm -hmm. I don't think they're going to go away completely. Um, uh, but it's, it's certainly nice to have the option. Yeah. So yeah. that was a good discussion, guys. Good discussion. I like it. How about that? We're growing up. <laughs> well, kind of. <laughs> um. So, uh, next topic, and this just, uh, as of our recording, uh, this was last night, the, uh, did you guys catch Cupcake Wars? Um, I did not, my DVR, I DVR'd it and my DVR messed up. Um, as you know what, said. you are not the first person I heard say that. Uh, yeah, it, it's, I have Cox Cable, and, uh, for those of you in the, uh, Gainesville area, if there are any of you, you know what I'm talking about, it's horrible, it's monopolized, and, uh... <laughs> Yeah, but um, yeah, my DVR messed up, which um, also brings you to the point that I was not able to watch uh, episode, um, was it six that was Metalhead? I think it was. Episode six was Metalhead, um, and I was not able to find it. So. Yeah, I believe that's right, yeah. So we'll talk about yeah. that later. Okay. Yeah, we have. Um, well, uh, I watched it. Was it awesome? Um, it was Okay. <laughs> I mean, it's Cupcake Wars. It can only be so lost. Like, <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, it was an episode of Cupcake Wars. Yes, I've seen Cupcake Wars before because my m wife likes that show. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she likes cupcakes. Um, but, <laughs> I'm I mean, wife. Whoops. Um, so interesting. Uh, so, I mean, they have a couple rounds, right? So the first round is where they have to do some kind of weird cupcake like they have four teams 
and each of them has to make a, some sort of weird cupcake. Well, the first cupcake they had to make was pizza themed. So they had a choice of doing a vegetable pizza, a Hawaiian pizza, or some sort of meat pizza. Now, of course, based cupcake. You know, they, they were still cupcakes. They just had to have some sort of flavor of those one of those three pizzas. Um, so nobody did the vegetable pizza, uh, which is totally understandable because nobody likes veggie right. pizza, except for my wife. <laughs> um, and uh, but uh, two of the teams did the Hawaiian. Two of the teams did the pepperoni, and. Uh, Apparently they came out pretty good. Um, they were uh, impressed with, especially with the pepperoni. Somebody did um, candied pepperoni. <clears throat> Didn't even know you could do that. Little slices of pepperoni that had like, you know, sugar all should, over it. And then uh, they we like to, we should, we should baked it. Screenshots of this and and uh, post them on our Twitter. Yeah, I can do that. I still have it on the DVR. Actually, I think it might even be queued up. So anyway, the uh, Kevin Michael Richardson, the voice of Shredder, he was uh, a guest judge. Um, they have three judges um, always. They have the the lady that opened up Sprinkles, which is in D.C. Uh, it's like the first like you know cupcake bakery. <laughs> yeah, Darby knows where it is. Um, yeah, I used to walk by it every day on my way to work when I used to live in Washington D.C. That place always had a line out the door, and it's just—it's highly overrated. Everyone who's ever, everyone who lives in D.C. knows that there's much better cupcake places than that. Well, but Georgetown that ex- show, so specifically, right? Georgetown is like cupcake capital of the world. Anything that's on Food Network gets overrated. Oh my god, it's on Food Network, so it's got to be an amazing restaurant. The food editor has to be amazing. Well, it's regular food, guys. I mean, she's she's okay on the show, actually. Uh, the the middle good judge is hilarious. He's like this, like I don't know, fat French guy who I swear just tries to have his French accent like way over the top. I I can't imagine he actually talks like this. He's like. <laughs> <laughs> the cream when I put the cream inside the cupcake and I eat it it tastes wonderful like that's great it's a it's I swear like I he can't literally talk like that like <laughs> I swear he's he's just you know doing it up for because he's on TV French by the way you're right, Darius. Because you said Zip. I thought he said Bundabot for a second. I was just like, Bundabot. Bundabot. <laughs> here, I'm gonna I'm gonna get this guy on on the air here. Anyway, the the winner, um, you know, they go through a couple different rounds. The winner, um, uh, so this was taped a while ago. Um, by the way, the host of this show is on the Nerdist. Uh, he's got some shows on the Nerdist on the YouTube page. Anyway, um. He's actually a magician. Who knew? Um, the winner got to do the cupcakes for the premiere, for the big Nickelodeon premiere. Oh, so, cool. yeah, this That's was cool. a couple months ago. So, um, anyway, okay. So, this is uh, this last bit um, is. You're going to have to explain to us because Alex and I were talking to this while you were on the phone with your mom, you know, because you didn't call her. I did birthday. call my mom. It's today's her birthday. And, uh, Happy so birthday, Alex, mom. We're talking about this. This is this so, might be some breaking news. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna try to determine this um, live on the podcast here. Uh, I've got an interview uh, through VentureBeat.com. Okay, okay. Um, uh, they have a games uh, section. There's an interview here with uh, a David. Helgeson. Helgeson. Yeah, it's weird. I have a friend named last name Helgeson, but yeah. it's not spelled the same. Anyway, uh, he's a, a CEO and co-founder of Unity Technologies, the maker of 3D uh, yeah, graphics game that. development platform Unity 3D. Okay. Now, in this interview, um, I mean, there's a lot. It's it's pretty technical in a lot of places too. But at one point. Um, when being asked about, uh, flash 11.4, um, 
is I mean, me having an iPhone, I don't even I didn't even know Flash still existed. But uh, oh, it does, my friend. It is alive and well. It's still ahead of HTML. It, it, not for long, but it, it is not for long. So uh, he's he's just kind of talking about some different things here. Let me read uh, this little bit here. Um, uh, there are uh, released games on it now. The Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles game. A lot of small games have been built that way. Um, what Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles game are they talking about here? Right. I'm going to talk. I, I'm going to say it's the one that's on the Nickelodeon website that they released mm. before the um, before the premiere when you could play as whatever turtle you wanted and run through. I mean, that's the only one I could think of that would be play on Flash because it says it's already released. There right. are released games on it now. The Ninja Turtles game. <laughs> Blah, 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 blah. Okay. However, that, so, that's not ruling out a, a game in the near future with the new series and the popularity of the new series. I think it's the one that's already been released, the one that was on the website before. It, that's it, what makes, I'm it makes sense. I'm usually right. It's, if, so. it's running, <laughs> if it's running on Flash, I, I would think it, it's definitely going to be a web based, so it's probably the one that's on. On, on the Nickelodeon page, but I I wouldn't rule out at this point a, a game on one of the major consoles because of the popularity of the current uh, of the current um, series. Uh, mm. I, I wouldn't rule it out. I, w- I mean, we had. Well, I mean, hey, don't get me wrong. I'm totally rooting for it to be a new game, but I'm reading the article, and as Ryan says, there are released games on it now. The Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Right. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm, small games have been built I'm not, that way. I'm not talking to the to, to the interview. The interview. I, yeah. That that. I'm agreeing. That's the, probably the one that's already. But I'm not ruling out the fact that there will be some sort of launch of a of a TMNT game. I mean, was, Smash Up was on the Wii. Uh, mm-hmm. So it, I mean, it wasn't a great game, but it was a uh, it, it was on the Wii, and that was a TMNT. It still counts as a TMNT game if it was just a uh, you know basically a rip off of Super Smash Brothers, just a TMNT version. But, um, yeah, I mean, I, there has to be, there has to be a, a, a new... You got to imagine there's something in the works. There has to be, because, I mean, they've, they've been re-releasing all these Turtle games, uh, you know, as, as content to download on, on both, you know, the PS3 and, and the Xbox, old arcade games, Turtles in Time, you know, they have, there has to be something in the works. Yeah. It's probably um, going to be Nickelodeon, Nickelodeon based. So it's going to probably be based off of the new series. Yeah. So, so, so or not, you're thinking good, more of a um, like a kids based one, maybe Wii U. I'm thinking, why not? I mean, it's it's going to be it's going to be on the Wii U, it, more than likely. I mean, with Nickelodeon, it might be cross platform, so it might be on all three. Well, it might be a DS game though too, because they always like oh, to put, that's like, a good point. Really kind might... of kitty games on the DS. I'm thinking yeah. maybe more DS than than Wii U. I'd, I'd be, I'd probably be expecting it more on that than on the Wii. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Nintendo loves their their handhelds too, so you know that's a good that's a good point. I would also not be surprised um, in the future to see an iPad game. Mm-hmm. Um, you yeah, know, you but look... that couldn't be Flash based, now could it? No, no, <laughs> no. So not based off of this, you know, this interview, but. Just in general, I'm, I'm saying I would not be surprised to see, um, you know, an iOS-based uh, turtle game. You know, maybe something along the lines of the, uh, maybe even like, you know, how there's the new Star Wars Angry Birds. And then there's the Disney's uh, Brave Temple Run, you know, where they essentially just retheme another game. And then turn it into you know that branded. I would not be surprised. I hope it's not that gimmicky. Mm. I really hope it's not. I, I'd rather see something more along the lines of a uh, uh, of so, something similar to what they have on the website. Um, well, you know, as far that as would iOS. certainly be cool. Yeah. I mean, they've already got it. You know, yeah. they've already got the game. So just right. you know, porting it over to HTML um, certainly makes sense. Mm-hmm. But, um, so we'll see. I mean, it, you got to imagine something like this is coming soon, though. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah. So, all right. Um, so that's all the news I've got, uh, for this, 
uh, for this episode. Um, what about the Comic Con thing we were supposed to be talking about? Well, I was going to kind of get into that and in with our uh, discussion points here. This is the topic. Of the, see, I didn't even get into like the topic of the show and blah blah blah. Didn't do the yeah unprepared. Um, <laughs> uh, this topic of the show today is just kind of be some dis. I called it discussion points. I uh, wanted to talk about uh, two things. One of them is like what you guys mentioned earlier. So, I've just been noticing some disrespect for the 2K3 series. I don't know. What should, we need to come up with a proper name for that series, by the way. Um, 2K3 sounds good to me. 2K3. Hey, you could call it the name. Four Kids series. <laughs> that would match up with the Nick me. series. Um, wow, we said it. It's already there. 2K3 sounds good to me. 2K3. You like it? You can have it. We can roll with 2K3. I mean, 2K, whatever. Do do people say that anymore? 2K? <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, yeah. Look at look at uh, look at the uh, like the, 2K12. The, do people the, say 2K12? Yeah, because of the series, the the, the whole video game series, NBA 2K12. I mean, uh, you know. Uh, uh, so it's 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 still around. Uh, okay. People uh. don't. People are lazy. They don't want to say 2000. Yeah, that whole extra <laughs> syllable just throws a kink in everything. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, very quickly, I always think it's funny when people say BTW. <laughs> uh, Instead of hey, just saying, by yeah. the way, because by the way is three syllables. BTW is five. So, anyway. So, anyway. Uh, what was the disrespect? Like, I didn't... So, uh... It, this is a video from the New York City um, Comic Con. Um, it's the uh, the Ninja Turtles panel, and uh, right off the bat, um, the the host of this panel, he's a, a reporter for uh, Entertainment Weekly, and uh, he. Oh, he's special. Yeah. Sorry. So he he claims he he, he said he's the. Um, the senior Ninja Turtles correspondent. Yeah, and he's bad mouthing. That just series. means that just means he knows more about the turtles than anybody that he works he, with. He knows he knows all four of their names. That's, that's pretty much what it means at, at E News. But anyway, exactly. All right. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna play a a, a segment of the uh, of the uh, the clip here so you can hear it. Um, on behalf of Nickelodeon, let me welcome all of you guys officially to the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles New York Comic Con panel. Uh, let me tell you a little bit about myself. Uh, my name is Ray Raman. Uh, I'm from. Thank you. <laughs> Got a, at least one fan. Uh, I'm from Entertainment Weekly. Uh, I'm a writer there and somehow the senior Ninja Turtles correspondent. So, this is a, a title I take very as seriously as you guys do, so um, let, me, let me be the first to tell you I am as excited to be here as you guys are. And it's going to be an amazing night. Uh, as a longtime fan, I've seen every iteration of this show, and I can tell you with confidence well, what these Nickelodeon guys are doing is amazing with the new show. If you haven't seen it yet, you need to watch it. It's amazing. <laughs> Um, everything that you like from the original series, from the comic books to the 80s series, and even the 2000s series, if you're one of those weirdos who prefers that iteration. Um, but I'm already in All right, so there you go. Um, you know, I don't know why he's why he had to say that. There's no need for that. Because um, obviously he got some booze. So go ahead, Doug. No, I mean, it, uh, I don't know why it, it just seemed uncalled for. Like, if you're one of the weirdos who prefers that one, prefers the what? The 87 series? The 2K12 series? What What are we comparing it to? Mm -hmm. It stood alone on its own, and I don't know why oh. he felt like he had to take a shot yeah. at it's not, that one. It's not like there were any other Ninja Turtles series on the air at the time, so it wasn't like well, pushing anything else topic. out. You know? Yeah, or it's not like it's going on. It's not like it's going head to head with the 2K12 series now. Exactly. 
There was no need for that. Personally, I'm not saying I like the 2003 series better than the 87. It was just different. It was brilliant, but it was different. You know what I mean? It's comparing apples to oranges. I, or, yeah, it's, it's just, there's, there was no need for that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Alex? Around. I don't think he knows we're back. Hello? <laughs> yeah, I'm back. What do you, uh, what do you think? I wasn't listening at all. <laughs> Excellent. I just I just got back. I just got back. <laughs> so tempted to booyaka show right now. <laughs> um uh so we're just talking about uh kind of the unnecessary shot at the uh 2K3 series. Um Well, what did he say? Uh he said, "If you're, he's, he's talking about the different iterations of the of the franchise. He's like the '87 series, and he said the 2003 series. And then he mumbled, if you're one of the weirdos who prefers that one, and then that actually got some boost. Yeah, if you're one of the weirdos that works at E News who knows nothing about the Teen Ninja Turtle series, Entertainment Weekly. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> Don't be hating on E News. It's even worse. <laughs> a magazine that nobody cares about anymore. It's a subscription that maybe my mom had in 1995. <laughs> wow, that's there I'm you go. So well, I really don't care. I really don't care what he has to say about anything um, regarding uh, re- regarding any of the series. Um, if look, I'm not a fan of every of of of, of the, and we'll talk about it later. So far, I haven't been a fan of the current series, but I'm not going to badmouth it in any way. Why? Because I love. The, the, the turtles in general. Just the fact okay. that there's turtles on the air. Right. Yeah. So I'm not going to badmouth it. I'm going to watch it. I'm going to find the good in it. Mm-hmm. That's what a true turtle fan should do. Not if you're one of the weirdos. Am I a weirdo because I like the, two, the, 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 the 2K3 series? Does that make me a weirdo? Because I was brought back into the turtle world because of that series. It's the first series we had in so long. Should you not be excited about it? It gave us one, arguably one of the best movies in Turtle history. Come on, bro. bro. I mean, seriously, you're not a journalist. You're a, <laughs> you're a booyakasha, okay? Oh, you are. You're a booyakasha. Excellent. Excellent. Good oh, job. I, I, nice I rant. I totally agree with Alex with what he's saying. It's, it's, you can't badmouth the 03 series just because it was different than the 87 series. And there was no need for that. Just, oh, okay, if you prefer to what? I'm sorry, was there a competing show? Was, did, was, was that guy working on a different show that was competing against the 2003 series at the time? Uh, uh, That's yeah. what I'm saying. And it's, not like, it's not like these Turtle series are competing with the like the original. or the two, They shouldn't be competing against each other. I they're mean, not. Right. Well, they're not. We're looking at a... It's 2012. They're not going to be competing with each other. It's not like people are going to be watching the 2K series over the... Uh, even though I personally uh, would re- prefer to watch the 2K3 uh, series over the, the current series. But, you know, it, it just... it was it, There was no point to it. There was no reason to even comment on it. It, it, was, it was completely pointless, like, banter on in, his end. In, in front really of a point. crowd of Turtles fans. Who weren't? Yeah, they that's weren't why he got booed. They, yeah, yeah. That's why he got booed for his troubles. Then that's why he works for Entertainment, Entertainment Weekly because he can't get a job as a real journalist. <laughs> <laughs> that's why he works for a company who we keep confusing with another company. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Talk to me when you start working for E News, there, buddy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um. Well, so the uh, the other. Example, and this is not as bad, but uh, so this interview with with uh, um, with Greg, um, like I said, he 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 claims to be the biggest turtle fan of the group, you know, because kind of he came up with it, uh, you know, growing up with the with the turtles and how he talks about how they had such a big impact on his life, um, in uh, and everything, so. And he's kind of gone over this, you know, in several of his different um, um, interviews. Um, so uh, there's this part of this interview where uh, 
Toon, this is from Toon Zone News, ToonZone.net. Um, reporter asks, uh, seems like you had a really encouraging crowd, uh, referring to the New York Comic Con crowd. Uh, uh, I've been a little surprised at how quickly the show was accepted, considering how afraid people were before it came out. Um, which I don't really was. Were people afraid of this show? No, that was more the. I was always looking forward to it. Yeah, that's the movie. I think he's getting a little confused. Yeah. Um, So Greg says, um, "Well, it's because none of those other incarnations of the show did it justice. Uh, I tuned them out. I never even watched any of the other incarnations." Uh, How does he know they didn't do justice? But anyway, go ahead. Yep. And that and that right there is proof that he's not the biggest turtle fan involved in the show. Yep. Uh, the first Turtle series was it for me, and I loved the first two movies, and then I was out. It wasn't because I didn't like the Turtles. It was that those other shows weren't doing it. That's why I feel like this one is the second coming, really, of it. Uh, wow. It was cool to witness the, the fans at New York Comic Con um, maybe even be skeptical at first, even at the beginning of the panel. Uh, and then to watch them melt and really enjoy themselves and be cool, not just seeing the cartoon, but blah, 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 blah. So, um, yeah. so I tuned him out after he said that was it. Yeah. Right. I so, so this kind of plays in with the, the last example where when he's talking about at the beginning, they were skeptical. They weren't skeptical. They were just upset that people were dumping all over the the 2K3 series. Right. I mean, no one has has been skeptical of this show, I don't think at all. I mean, Look, in all of the skeptics. If but... they were no, I mean if they were skeptical at all, it's because the 2003 series was so good. They set the bar so high for the 2K12 series. That would be why there there was skepticism going in. If He's... any he sound, he all he sounds like in this interview is like an, a a nostalgic turtle fan. That's yeah. all it is. Yeah. <clears throat> How can so, you even say it sucked if you never watched it? It's like that movie's horrible. Oh, did you watch it? No. Uh, well, then how do you know? Other incarnations of the he, obviously he's he's only talking about uh, about the two K three series because it's the there only, is the only other incarnation the only of incarnation. the animated anyway. Well, no, no, right. he, he also didn't watch the third movie and the fourth movie, according to him. And right. let's face it, the fourth movie oh, is that's the a second best of the movies. Turtles Forever. No, no, the fourth movie, TMNT. Yeah, yeah. oh, I know, and oh, yeah. um, and Turtles Forever. I know, but I'm saying that means yeah. he didn't watch TMNT. Yeah. So, like, right. how can you tell me? That one and two were it for you when TMNT, it's pretty much been decided, is a better movie than than two. Right. And then and then like you said, Turtles Forever. He didn't watch Turtles Forever. Turtles Forever was amazing. Yep. Come on, man. So, you can't call you can't call I mean, there's no way. There's no way. I I have a hard time believing. Look, his voice, his voice acting is perfect. I think it fits yeah. with Mikey perfect. Yeah. But there's no way. It's very hard for me to believe. That he's a bigger fan, a team, a turtle fan than Rob Paulson. I'm sorry, I'm oh, sorry. It, there's no way. There's no way. It's not Rob. Um. It, yeah. It, it's just. It's just a. Okay, so I mean, I've been getting more and more into you know voice uh, acting and voice actors as is you know as far as being a fan of of the actual people that you know put these voices. Uh, into these these characters, and um, you know, I I understand that a lot of them it's just a job, you know, and they're just very good at their job, and that's totally fine. And you know, it, they they just say, you know, yeah, I don't know, you know, it happens a lot on on for the you know the Clone Wars where, you know, I get that not everybody is a big Star Wars fan. I mean, for some people, they are, and they get to be on the show, and they get really excited. But for other people, they're just voice actors that are getting a job that just happens to be in, in a Star Wars. And they're like, yeah, you know, it's cool, whatever, I guess. It's just not their thing, which is fine. And it's the same thing with Ninja Turtles. Like, I mean, uh, when when uh, Sean Astin is, is asked about uh, Ninja Turtles, he's not like, 
you know, he doesn't pretend like he was a big fan. He's like, no, man, I just, I really wasn't into it. You know, I was, I wasn't really the right age for it. And, you know, I saw that, you know, I had like, you know, family members that were really into it. And I was like, well, that's cool. But, you know, it just wasn't, you know, I didn't grow up with it, you know, but, and that's totally fine. So, right. Uh, you know, it, it don't, I, I guess what I'm, I, I mean, are we really, maybe we are, maybe we're calling out <laughs> his fandom. Maybe we're saying that. Oh, I'm, absolutely. I am challenging him right now. We're, we're definitely calling him out so. because there's and no that's way. Because too, he claims to be the best. He claims to be the biggest fan. John Aston doesn't. So if you're going to claim to be the biggest turtle fan and then just, you know, say that about two thousand two K three and say that TMNT or turtles forever never happened. Yeah. then you're not a fan. You're a fan right. of, like, the beginning of the franchise, but not the end. Yeah. We're, and we're, we're not just... saying he has to be. He no. We don't care. We just don't, we don't care. But if you're going to claim you are, and then you're going to yeah. say, you know, stuff like that, come on, man. It just, yeah. it, 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 it just doesn't make any sense. Yep. I agree. And and it's, again, like we're, we're saying, we're not saying that he has to be. Maybe we're saying he should at least check him out, right? He should at least give him a shot. You, look, you can't say. Otherwise, you can't say it sucks. You yeah. can't, can't say it sucks. Right. Happen, you can't say all the other incarnations don't do it justice, except for the original series and the first two movies. When you haven't seen any of them, yeah. you haven't watched them. Maybe you watched one, you got a bad taste in your mouth. Okay, fine. You didn't like a certain episode in the two. I didn't like every episode in two K three. I didn't. I didn't enjoy every episode. Okay, plain and simple. So he saw maybe he saw a bad episode and he just he he, he checked out. That does not make you a good turtle. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta ride out the wave, man. You gotta ride it out. You, I mean, and especially the movies, right? Especially the movies, absolutely. Especially I mean, we're, we're, we're I mean, the turtle fans themselves are the biggest critics. We're the sure. biggest critics of the turtle series. Oh yeah. I mean, look at us talking about the the turtle movie that's upcoming in, in the last episode, or mm. well, that may be upcoming. Uh, I mean, we're the biggest critics by far. So yeah. to be critical about the series is okay. But yeah. to say that you 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 watched you know you watched it and then you just checked out completely and didn't watch anything more that does not make you a fan. I'm sorry. Agreed. I yep. concur. Darby. Yeah, no, I'm right there with you guys. There you go. All right, so that's uh, those are those are the two things. We I just felt like we needed to talk about that, and I feel a lot better now that we did. Um, I'm glad I wasn't the only one that that you know you know, felt that way. So I'm glad that you guys are right there with me. So, um, I guess what I would say to, to Greg is try him out. I mean, if you, if you did grow up with the, uh, the original series and you enjoyed it, uh, I think as an adult now you would enjoy, uh, the two K three series, you would enjoy TMNT for sure. Uh, and you definitely would enjoy turtles forever. So, yeah. And, you know, it's, it, I'll, I'll, I'll add this, that it's hard to get over that hump when that's what you grew up with. And it's hard to see any kind of other reincarnations. But now that you're part of one and you're claiming that, you really should give – I mean, you're in, you're in the series now. So you're yeah. now part of Turtle history. you got to – I mean, you got to do your homework, man. Yeah. Plain and simple. Um, uh, seen the same thing in the, uh, the Clone Wars. Um with with their cast and they definitely have for the main cast they have you know embraced their position and have you know they took that ball and ran with it and they're still running so running hard <laughs> uh, they're okay they're getting blisters and their knees are aching and... oh stop it <laughs> i ran eight miles yesterday <laughs> a little sore Sure. Oh, gosh. Okay, so uh, last thing we want to talk about as part of our discussion points. We're going to talk about the new series. We're going to talk about some of the pros, some of the cons. Um, we're not going to get real in-depth as, as far as, you know, each episode, uh, you know, review of each episode. And we know you're watching it. We know that you know uh, that you have an opinion on the show. You know, we're, we're not going to tell you... <laughs> that this one was good or this one was bad. I mean, that's definitely up to you um, to determine. I mean, we ha each have our own, dis <laughs> our own opinions. Um, so 
Uh, I've got some pros and cons I wanted to go over, um, and, and you guys can feel free to jump in here. Um, I guess we'll start with the, uh, well, what do you guys want to do? Pros or cons first? Uh, I, you know, I like the series. I'm liking it so far. I know Alex is not. I thought we'd just go back and forth from there. (laughs) Yeah. Um, there, for me, uh, it's the, the episodes, um, they vary for me Uh, a lot. I agree. And I think there's a lot of writing flaws, which we touched on one of the episodes. Okay. Uh, with, so um, let's so let's go through the cons first, then. Let's go through. Uh, we'll uh, end on a good note. Yeah. Um, okay. So the cons, I would say, first one, um, yes, and a lot of these, uh, Alex, uh, you and I already talked about. So um, and I, I list this as a con because, uh, and let me explain, um, I'd say that it's made primarily for kids. Uh, And the reason I I say that it's a con is because uh, there's there's less story for adults than I'd like. Um, There's, you know, great animation, um, you know, is is not just for kids. It's for kids and adults. Think about Shrek. Think about Toy Story. Think about the Clone Wars. Think about, you know. Sure. And that was a Nickelodeon. Avatar, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, where those stories, you know, you can be five or 25 or 55. I was going to go, go a little higher, man. I'm, I'm, I'm 25. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and enjoy it, you know, for different reasons. You know, little kids, like they're going to... They're going to enjoy, uh, you know, the bright colors and the, the flashy movements and everything like that. To me, that's not a like con, though. To me, that's just them trying to get an entire new generation, like, I, on board. I get like, that. People that aren't, familiar, like, kids, like my nephews who are, oh, my God, they're, like, seven and four now. Like, they are going to be more into that aspect of the show than the adult-oriented stuff. Absolutely. So, so to Absolutely. Me, targeted to kids is not necessarily a con. Right, right, right. And I'm not saying that they shouldn't make it, you know, towards, you know, kids. But what I'm saying is that they shouldn't forget that adults would be watching this as well. I, I, just don't, I don't, don't think they are. I don't want them to uh, stray too far from, from that from, – from that. I mean, even the previews. When we when we first started looking at the series before it actually, like, it came out, we all thought it was going to be darker than what it, what it actually turned out being. Sure. Uh, am I wrong in saying that? I mean, we we saw the the images of Shredder. We saw the weapons that they were going to be using. I mean, right. to to target a younger generation, but to have more violent weapons than before, it's it's, it's a kind of an interesting little twist, but. I, I, I get it. They're, they're definitely target, targeting a, a younger audience. They're trying to build, you know, the turtle name up a little bit, and they're trying to sell toys. Toys. Let's be honest. Sure. That's. Did you also but. notice too that, and this was kind of a con for me, was, you know, we saw the preview clips that they showed that they released, and then when it came time for them to be in the show, they were different. They're edited, yeah. Uh, the the missiles, the lines were even different. Yeah, the know? missiles what was when, happening when in the scene it, and what they were saying was different. Yeah. Yep. Um. So I mean, I mean, what'll be interesting, I guess, to see is what happens as this show progresses over the next, you know, several years because it's going to be around. I mean, it's it's so far it's been a big success for Nickelodeon, no doubt. Um, their marketing <laughs> machine has been behind it, you know, hundred percent, and uh, it's. It's paying off for them so far. I mean, good ratings, good re- um, you know reviews for you know for the kid you know audience. So, um, but as I said, it'll be interesting to see where it goes in the future because I I know I always bring back Clone Wars, uh, but it that show started off for kids. Mm-hmm. Now in season five. There might be kids watching it, but it is not for kids anymore. Yeah. Um, it is, it is <laughs> getting darker and darker, which it series. had to because, you know, it's heading towards episode three. But 
Well, um, I mean, it's also they grow with the series. I right. Mean, if they, exactly. If, and the kids grow with the series. Absolutely. Old, Absolutely. Yeah. You know, a kid that was 10 when he started watching is now 15. Um, he likes darker stuff. He yeah. likes more adult-oriented stuff. Absolutely. So it, that's what I'm interested to see, if this will kind of go that same route or if it's going to kind of you know stay more like the original animated series where it was kind of pretty much the same level you know, for all 10 seasons. So. I, I, feel, I, I mean, I, I feel like it, I, I think as the seasons progress, actually, I think it's gotten a little darker uh, every every time. Like this last episode, Monkey Business. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I, I thought. I mean, yeah. come on. I thought. I thought that was, uh, that was definitely to me. It was the darkest, ep- and to me, was uh, by far the best episode. Um, I would agree I, with that. So, I would agree with that. I think it had the best writing. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Um, you know the the uh, you know the the special effects and um, the the animation. You know, while it, they're great, they can only get you so far. In yeah. as an adult, you know, I exactly. say as an adult. So um, let's go to a, another con. Um, this uh, goes back to uh, a couple episodes ago, um, where. Uh, Raph, this is the Raphael centric episode um, with spider bites? Yes. Um, the problem I had with was uh, when Raphael was in the middle and he was getting punished. Uh, I thought that was a great scene, actually. I was a big fan of that scene where everyone was shooting arrows at him. Yeah. And then they all started bullying him. This yep. is essentially what happened. To be, to be a shit show. What are told him to? Yeah. He's condoning bullying. He's, he's condoning horrible. bullying. He's not bullying. He's training Raph to get his temper under control. By getting you know, bullied. Before they were... By getting bullied. No, what, what, essentially what little kids saw there is how to bully somebody. No, what they saw was don't let words like mess up your mind and drive you to do stuff you shouldn't. Just but you know, they let, let did bother him, like like a river over stone. <laughs> All right, you did not so let the words that. flow over you. You know, yes, yeah, but, but don't let the plungers you know flow over you. Well, the Please, whole thing on. was that was the point of the exercise was because Raph couldn't focus. So yeah. I loved. That. I thought it was a great scene because like they're like, yeah. okay, now insult him. I thought that was a really funny scene. They they were saying all these things to him while they were pelting him with it. I thought it was great. I thought it was hilarious. Hey, and then, um, he, I he just, kids are getting bullied out of bully. This is this is, this is bully the bully. Bully I think this bully. is kind of telling of what kind of person Darby is. <laughs> you gotta, no, people are going to bully you regardless. People are going to insult you no matter who you are. So you got to learn to just kind of let the words go and just like not let it get you into trouble. Because like, because words are only hurtful if you make them. Look, Splinter in the series sucks. I'm just gonna say it real quick. Whatever, dude. I love Splinter in the series. I have actually laughed more at Splinter like already than I ever have of all the other Splinters. Yeah, well, that's not what I want from Splinter. Uh, that's I, just me. That's just me. That's just me, though. That, that's not what I want from Splinter. I, I want. How, uh, how does he suck? He's great in the series. I love him. I love him so far. I love uh, how it took them less than two seconds to pick Leonardo as the leader. Yeah, I, I, love thought, how, I, thought, I thought that was stupid because he. It was because he raised his hand. It had nothing to do with anything else. You, well, except Mike, they wanted to pick Mikey. It was stupid, yeah, man. That would have been wrong. I thought that was great. That was a great scene. Or like how he teaches Leo by like beating him up because that's pretty much how you learn your ninjutsu. Well, that was okay. Want... That, that was all right. That, that was an okay scene. Yeah, when, when he when he swept his leg, he just pinned him to the ground. Was that yeah. fair? Oh, did I win? Okay. <laughs> I like, like that. I like that. And I like when he tail sw- uh, last episode when he did the little tail sweep on uh, Michelangelo while he yeah. was trying to teach Donatello. I thought that was kind of that was comical. There but, are there are times for me when when the Splinter in this series will say or do something that is spot on to what I think what I know of as Splinter. And then there are times when I feel like they miss the mark. But I mean, he does that in every incarnation, like in the in the 2003 series, you know, he'd get mad because he'd want to watch his soap operas and then, and then they couldn't and he couldn't watch it because something bad would happen. Like he's still like that. He has that mentality in every one I've seen him in every incarnation, even in TMNT. He was like that. Yeah. And he's uh, like this one, too. And I like I like he's not 
But he doesn't watch soap operas in this one. <laughs> but, there's, my biggest con right now is that my favorite turtle, Leonardo, is my least favorite in the series. Well, you know why? Because that what the, I see. I think they're doing really well with Leo because Leo. That's how I always saw Leo is like the Boy Scout who tries to be like this hero, and all the other turtles are just like, really? They're playing that off really well in this series. I think. I think that. I think they're doing it too much. And I. I my, he's, my, he's, my, he's like 13, 14 years old right now. That's how. That's uh, how any teenager he's would He's obsessed act, with you know? uh, Star Trek. I, I think. I think they're way too kiddish. And my my, my favorite my favorite turtle. Actually, saying that, and my my favorite turtle in the whole series is so far right now is uh, is is definitely Michelangelo, followed by Donatello, then Raphael, and then Leonardo. Michael, everybody loves Michael. That's the thing. I've been like, some friends of mine have been getting into the turtles because I've been telling them about them in the podcast. So this is like their first incarnation that they're watching, and they all love Mikey. Yeah, yeah I do. I, I like Mikey in the series. I do. Yeah. I, I like him in this series. I like I like Mikey in this series better than I did in the two K three series. I do too, but I actually like Raph right now in this series. I hate to admit that, but I actually like Raph right now in this <laughs> series because you know in the first episode when they were escaping uh, the Krang and the and the Krang was reaching through the door, I'm like Raph, just rip his arm off and use it to lock the door, and then that's what he did, and right. they like and they gave him crap for it. They're like, wow, that was twisted. He just was like, thanks, like I liked that. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I would have done. I'm like, Raph, rip his arm off and use it to lock the door. Yeah. Okay. Or just how, you know, hey, Raph, we need a plan to go in. Why? <laughs> I like that, Raph. Yeah. I, I want to see more Casey. Casey uh, isn't happening. Well, you got to see a Casey. <laughs> uh, a Casey, yeah. I should say, yeah. Yeah. I see Casey. They, they already said he's not coming in until at least season two. Yeah, yeah. that's, that's, yeah. I, I, I feel, I feel the need for Casey. But, you know, it's like you said about Mikey. I feel most of the times I've laughed in the show have been because of Mikey. No, yeah. he's no doubt the comic relief. Definitely. Yeah, like I said, Greg Stipes is doing a great job with the voice. Too, because oh, he's... yeah, absolutely. absolutely. I laughed so hard when they got up, up to the surface for the first time and he was distracted by the blinking light. I laughed so hard at that scene. Oh, that, that was awesome. That was awesome. Now it's a hand. Now it's an eye. Oh, I laughed so hard at that. <laughs> um... All right, so let's uh, the next next con. Do we gonna, we are mixing in pros with the cons here, so um, whatever. Who's your favorite turtle right now on the show, Ryan? Like, if you were just going by oh, the Raph, show, still really? Uh, yeah, uh, um, are you I think biased? that uh, he's being biased. He's so being biased. No, 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 no. I just I I think that he's the most adult of all of them. That's um, I think that he's the most independent one, um, and well, that's, 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 I mean that's just that's always yeah yeah they've they've got his character pretty good. I will say that uh, as well as I, I think that they've nailed his character probably better than any of the other ones. I mean they they're all pretty good. They're all pretty good as far I as you know, I, I think Leonardo is absolutely. Uh, <laughs> uh, right I didn't say it all the way. I didn't say it all the way. For... <laughs> I, I think uh, that that Leonardo is just. I, I, you know what? I think Jason Biggs is ruining for me. I really do. I think I think the voice acting for Leonardo is horrible. No way, man. See, Leo, they're doing really well with Leo because he he's not a leader. Like, yeah, he's the technical leader, but he has no experience in being that so yeah. far. No, so I he has. That's fine. He, fine. He, he, you're too kitty. It's because they're they're. They're like the most teenager of the group of the incarnation so far, and like, who knows? Maybe over the years they'll grow into it, and it'll be better. Leo will be less of a, you know, I'm trying I'm, to think I'm, of a good word to use here. He'll be less of a tool. What like, they, what they do later on is fine. This is what I'm I'm feeling right now. My initial thoughts of the series. If they if they if they continue to adapt and to and to grow like they have in future in in, in uh, previous series. That that'd be great. That's what I'm hoping for. But as of right now, that's that's the way I feel. Uh, you know, Leo wants to be the the superhero space captain, so he's going to act like it. I like it. I, I like how they're playing all the turtles off so far, because I'm understanding that they're you know younger than most incarnations have been, and that they're more teenage like, and they should be. So, and uh, yeah. apparently, Donnie's going through puberty as well. He's the only one <laughs> apparently so far. Yeah. Um, oh, interested in women. Go figure. Huh? <laughs> well, that's because they don't have Venus to Milo. Oh, 
Uh, yes. Yes. Uh, yes. Yes. Stop it. Stop it. No, they're never going to. Not oh, yet. Yeah. Fly? Not yet. Oh, man. man. Would it fly? Oh. oh. <laughs> David loses his mind. I, I, I quit the podcast. I'd be like, guys, I just can't support them anymore. I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh, goodness. Um, okay, so uh, a, a con for me, uh, inconsistency. Uh, we've seen a couple of instances of this. Um, uh, going back to the episode with um, Chuck Norris. Bad Brad. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, right at the beginning of the episode, um, uh, Shredder's telling him that my old nemesis, um, Hamato Yoshi, is Yoshi. is building a, a, a an army in, in New York. And, uh, and Chuck Norris' character goes, he goes, I will go there and defeat Splinter. Whoa, whoa, yeah. who said anything about Splinter? Uh, he, yeah, he, he will defeat Splinter's one. allies. Yeah. Wait, just how do you miss that? Like all of us, we saw that first thing. We're like, wait, whoa, whoa, time out. I just, I don't understand how they miss that. Like that's just so blatantly obvious. Maybe um, the Foot Clan that you know Chuck Norris was raising already came across him. And you got, you got. Like, come on, you got, you. That doesn't make any sense. It's it's Chuck, just, Norris. Chuck, Chuck Norris. Chuck Norris. I don't care if it's Chuck. I, Chuck Norris lost. Okay. <laughs> 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 lost, and he he lost to he lost to Mikey and Donnie in that episode, didn't he? Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Yeah, because they, the they, they switched. Yeah, they switched. They switched. Because the fighting styles were different. The fighting style. Yeah. Um, but, I still think and I'm going to say it right now. I still think that Rad Brad is going to be Rad Brad and Vesper are going to turn out to be Dog Pound and Fish Face. I'm still thinking that's what's going to happen. Yeah. I agree. I agree 100. percent Yeah, I think so, it's pretty blatant. You know. Um, I, which brings me to, to a call. I, I don't like what they did with Baxter Stockman. I'm just going to say that right now. I did not like that either. I didn't like that he was like a dorky, nerdy, oh. evil guy. Instead yeah. of just being an evil scientist genius. Yeah, just they, they made him plucky. very um, unconfident. He has no self-confidence. No confident. And he got lucky because he found, uh, you know, a, 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 a teapot. A, 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 yeah, a teapot. Uh, so... Come on, man! Like, really? And he's trying to break well, also, in with. What I, didn't, what I didn't understand in that scene, and that was uh, like they defeated him with a beehive. But like, wasn't there a window over Baxter's face? And yet they just put the beehive there anyway. I, well, I, I, I think he was getting caught. I think he rolled the window down. <laughs> I don't know. They didn't show it, but um, he, he had like something covering his face. Then when Mikey threw a beehive in there, it suddenly wasn't there anymore. So, yeah. um. Another uh, another issue for me, uh, the I guess kind of weak attempt uh, for, of of April trying to find her father. It's like this storyline that they're really just kind of just have a thread. That I, that's the thread I guess that they have for this season, but it's the, so yeah, thin. It's very thin. Very thin. Very well, thin. I mean. It, it needs more focus. Expensive. Either it needs more focus or end it. it, it, it yeah, it, it can't go the whole season. Well, well, they just, I mean, okay. From because where she's we like, just left off, where we just left off, Splinter says she he's going to train April to be a female ninja. So right. maybe once she actually gets more training in ninjutsu and fighting and stealth, maybe they'll delve deeper into that. When she picks up the skills... She needs but to she's find her like father. not. I get that, but she's yeah, like she, not really worried at all. Yeah, she's, she's, so, she's so chill about it. Yeah, yeah my dad's like, oh missing, my man. dad got kidnapped. Huh. But at least I got Donnie here who's staring at me all the time, and you know has a flow chart <laughs> on how to date me. Wasn't that great? Everything the, was on that. Oh, I, 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 I thought the I thought the flow chart was awesome. I thought the flow chart was so. <laughs> awesome. was he had so many. They're like, I like when Leo was like, oh, I bet that wasn't on his flow chart. Oh, wait, oh, it was. It was yeah, I thought it was great. <laughs> Um, so That's yeah, totally just a little scary. bit more yeah, focus, a little bit more attention to that storyline. Um, I like yeah. how Splinter was like, I'm, I'm just letting you know, April, that I'm going to start training you. And Donatello already had that on his flowchart. Yeah. <laughs> right. That was pretty good. Training with Splinter. There it is. Um, speaking of Donnie, uh, in the, uh, Metalhead episode, um, Which Alex hasn't seen the end of yet. 
but you did see the beginning, right? I, I got to the point where um, they were above the warehouse, April and uh, and Metalhead, and Donnie was staring at her, uh, really creepy like, and uh, okay. the turtle fighting in the warehouse. So at right. the beginning, then you saw the whole thing where Donnie, you know, breaks his bow, and then he's like, "Oh, stupid bow!" Yeah. Yep. If we ever seen this before, where no, a turtle no, we got and mad I, at I his, I really wanted to get Darby's uh, perspective on that. Him it being your favorite turtle, of course. No, no, I'll, uh, I'll tell you exactly my perspective on it. My perspective, I liked it. I straight up liked it because remember we we've talked about it before. How like the mousers would chew through like building and you know yep. concrete and steel, and then they they couldn't break Donnie's staff, mm-hmm. or you know, and 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 if it's a more realistic element to his bow staff. And, and I kept saying the same thing, like how the heck is he fighting all these robots with a giant wooden stick? And then, and this, Oh my God, this made me so mad in the Baxter Stockman episode. He finally pulls out the blade at the end of his bow staff. And I went, Oh, it's about to get real. And in the time it took me to say, Oh, it's about to get real. Baxter Stockman grabbed the bow staff and broke it. Yep. Mm. So I was so mad then. I was like, that is a crap weapon. Like, no, I, I, I was right there with Donatello. I was. Yeah. Know. But I mean, I, 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 look, man, you can't t- start talking about wanting some sort of level of realism when you have aliens inside robots and mutated turtles. That's not, that's not what this, <laughs> this, this show should be going like aiming towards, you know, it's a bow staff and it, you know, it, the, it's, yeah. I don't want him to be the weak link, and they're kind of making him out to be. Yeah. They they made him out to be the weak link in the 2003 series too. Yeah, exactly. I've always been slightly okay with it because <laughs> Donnie's always been more focused on learning and building stuff than to actually tra- practice his ninjutsu. Yeah, he's the most level headed of the group. Uh, they they've said that in multiple incarnations that he's the most level headed of the group. I'm not saying he should be the leader, but he's the most level headed one. So. Yeah. I could always understand why he would be the weak link, but hey, believe me, I don't want him to be the weak link either. But his bow staff, you know, it's the worst weapon if you're going up against high tech alien technology and all that. Not and in the video it's, games. It's, 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 yeah, <laughs> yeah that's games. true. A lot of times the the, uh, the bow is the uh, most powerful weapon in a lot of the. Oh, it uh, is. Oh, yeah. But I'm saying the for the sake of the series, for the sake of realism, because, you know, you never really go for that in video games. Uh, <laughs> you know, Bow staff, probably not the best. Um, in that episode, he had a for a second, there was, I was so happy. in that episode though with the metalhead episode, there was no mention of the fact that it's a Naginata at all. Though, well, it wasn't a Naginata. It was a diff- it was a different staff. Remember, he had to have it remade because it broke. Well, it broke when Baxter Stockman broke it, and then it broke again at the very beginning of the episode. So, are, are we led to believe that he's never going to have a Naginata again because the one he had he got broke? I hope he does, man. I, he needs it. He needs the blade. Mikey's got his blade. And, yeah, yeah, no. It, I, well, that's it, the it, thing. It I just serious. assume that every bow was now a Naginata. That ever all of his bows are also <laughs> hidden Naginatas. You know, they've, he's got a, a blade hidden inside. But yet, for some reason, in this, I guess that's part of the plot point. They couldn't. I mean, they were trying to show that his weapon is inferior, but. You know, so showing that it's a Naginata is, wouldn't help to that cause. But I don't know. It just seemed kind of oh, strange that they were like, hey, we, he's got a Naginata. Oh, we're just going to pretend like that doesn't exist again. Yeah. Well, you know, it's for the kids. Remember, we were talking about like, yeah. oh, my God. See, really but these are the things that as Naginata. adults that you, you notice, you know, the, the, these little plot points that um, that it, like to me, it feels like um, – uh, like sloppy writing. Well, yeah. you know what? You know what, though, and uh, and I mean, spoil alert, Alex, because you know, at, in the end, what wait, happens, wait, wait, hold on, wait, 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 Alex, how do you think it ends? How do I think it ends? Yes. Um, I'm sure that that Krangs find some sort of way to manipulate uh Metalhead and turn him against Donnie, and then Donnie has to actually leave the lair and come out and save the day. <laughs> That's exactly what happened. <laughs> That's exactly what happened. That's, oh, that's awesome. Exactly what happens. But the thing is, and, and you know, Splinter even pointed it out at the very end it's of like the episode when drawing between the lines. You know, right? <laughs> when Splinter said Donnie was responsible, 
Splinter's like, mm. you are, but you know what? You defeated, you did all of these things. You defeated that awesome weapon you built and all that technology using only a simple stick, which in my mind makes Donnie even more badass because, I mean, hey, a stick and he can beat all of those people. Well, here, here's what I would say. One, uh, a bow uh, handled by somebody who really knows what they're doing is a very deadly weapon. It's de- it, it's de- it's deadlier than any of the others. I mean, think about the yep. reach you have. The, the, the reach you have. Except, maybe the, Except for the blades, the katana blades. I mean, the katana blades, they would... See, but the thing, struggle. too, though, is that with... You know, if you know what you're doing with a bow, that you can... You know, fend off um, swords, any swords. Right, but if the blades are sharp enough, they should be able to cut through, or at least damage. But these, it. Uh, this isn't just a normal, you know, stick. It's not a stick. It's you know, I say, I say, very I say, hardened wood. <laughs> I just don't know why they can't make Donnie's bow like a metal one. Or something. Uh, that's what I was about to say. I was well, about to say the exact, exact same thing. Uh, it would fit his his character a lot better. In the, and being uh, the tech. Fast forward version of uh, the two K three series when they went in the future. I mean, he had a he had a futuristic bow. Just give him yeah, a I didn't watch that. Done with it. Yeah, give him the double sided lightsaber. But uh, it's funny though because you say that, Alex, about um, it, it would suit Donnie more to have a tech weapon. Well, he kind of tries to add a, a, a tech to his bow at the end of the episode, and it doesn't turn out very well for anybody. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so. But uh, so going also going talking quickly about the uh, Metalhead episode. I know you didn't see it, Alex, but you pretty much did. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's a point where, like you said, the Krang um, takes over Metalhead. One of them jumps on Metalhead's head Ed. and suddenly takes control of the robot. Wait, what? How? Okay, the, wait, wait, wait. The, that's the, not the worst yeah, part for me. Uh, Meta, that's Meta not the worst part for me. Broken, so he couldn't control it anymore. Right, okay. so he gets on, he just jumps on Metalhead's head, and all of a sudden he has control over the entire robot. Okay, now here's the thing that got me, like, the like I was just like, um, <laughs> uh, I, I was like yelling at the TV. Um, so the turtles go up are now, are, and are now trying to fight Metalhead. With the crane sitting on top of Metalhead's body. Remember, wow, Metalhead is like four feet tall. Yeah. Yeah. And all they do is go up and start hitting. Metalhead's just standing there. <laughs> they go up and they're just, you know, check, 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 just trying to, to beat up Metalhead. Why not hit the crane? Hit the dang crane on the head. Right. <laughs> He's right there. The hit him. Right. Right. Uh, yeah, I'm like, yelling like, at the TV. Oh um, my! Right. Uh, you know, it, it, sports. It, Chop the crane in half, like right now. <laughs> exactly. They're literally like going out inside. of their way to avoid hitting the actual crane, which is just sitting right there on top, right on his head. Out the open. Out in the open. He's out in the like open. Up like he was in the other androids. Exactly. Just so, sitting there. Come on. How did how did uh, Donnie ultimately defeat Metalhead then? He had Metalhead destroy the support beams of the building, and then one collapsed on hit onto Metalhead. And Donnie, like, I don't don't ask me how Donnie stabbed Metalhead through with his bow staff that broke. Yeah, he like got it. Like, what was it like? Like between like a chest plate or something, or yeah, in the neck like or between something. his chest plate while yeah. the steel beam from the while the steel support beam was falling on top of Metalhead. Yeah, okay. it was a lucky shot. Yeah, it was. And, and then Donatello screams out "Booyaka shot," and Mikey said it that's sounded the, weird that's when the he line. said it. Yeah, right. Yeah. Um, okay. Weird when so, he says it. But it, that brings me to the crank too. Uh, am I the only one that's having an issue with say. dialogue with the crank? Like it's really annoying the crap out of me. I love the crank dialogue. I think it's hilarious. This place that is this place. Yeah, it just, oh, it just, it just, it just, it just makes me want to shoot myself. Makes me want to shoot myself, man. <laughs> it really does. Like, come on, man. These are supposed, these are intelligent beings. Really? Really? Come on. <laughs> it's sort of how I would expect the Borg to talk to each other, you know, like, since they're all like of one mind of one species, <laughs> like they were just talking to Borg, please. Let's a- <sighs> there are pros to it. And we, we've been talking a lot about the cons, but. 
there are pros to it too. I mean, this- but see, your cons, I like. I like the way the Krang talks. I love the Krang dialogue. It's hilarious. Do you, do you have any episode- cons? Still, I guess the better question: Do you have any cons at all? <laughs> I do. But like uh, in the first episode, when like the Krang were talking and Snake was like, "Oh my God, shut up!" I thought that was hilarious. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like the way they were talking. Yeah, well, it's, my it's, cons are pretty much what you guys have said. It's just I'm giving them the benefit of the doubt because there's only been six or seven episodes right now, so you know I'm still giving them the benefit of the doubt. So. It's 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 an update. You know, it's it, it's it's all you know. It, it, it's an update series. So as of right now, that's how I feel. As as of you know, as the next episode, like I said, this last episode was the best one. It drew me in a little bit more. So we'll see what they continue to do with the series. And, you know, my mind may be changed throughout, you know, the, the, the actual series itself. As of right now, I, I think that it's just – it's it, it could be a lot better than what it really is right now. You know, it's funny though. I, I – you know, I think Leo is better than you're giving him credit for. Yeah. I, you know, I, I, I guess I'm most crucial about my favorite turtle. Uh, you know, and I, I just I, – I, I don't like – I don't know if it's – I don't know if it's just solely the voice acting – that I don't I don't like Jason Biggs as as Leo. I thought I would, I really thought I would, and it's not like I'm not like I'm tuning him out. Like I, I, every every episode, every week, you know, I I am like I'm looking forward to it. I'm I'm still looking forward to the series. I'm still looking forward to an episode and to watch an episode to see you know if it's going to get any better or what you know I'm going to be able to pick up off you know from from the episode. And right. I, I I just feel like I I, I don't see the kind of development that I would like to see out of Leo. And I, I just, I, I want to punch Jason Biggs in the face. <laughs> and that's, that's just, I, I just don't like Jason Biggs as a voice actor for, uh, for Leo. I just don't. There you go. I, you know, I, I, I think he's got a lot of good one liners though, so far too, you know, like bad guys love chasing Mikey or, you know, we have to stay away from strangers and bathrooms like he's got some good one-liners so far that i'm totally down with but yeah no the the, the one-liners come are, are fine but it's it's when it, i guess it's just jason biggs saying it and maybe it's just jason biggs that i'm th- i'm knowing and i'm thinking the whole time that it's jason biggs talking and i don't like jason biggs talking i think he's better with you know with you know with a pie oh, <laughs> oh, but i you know i like rob paulson as donatello i thought i would think it was weird at the beginning but i've never had a problem with rob paulson as oh, donatello. i think i think he's great as donnie i think he's great i think uh, i think him him and greg sipes by far fit you know i you know yeah you know, they're is, great is, yeah is, is, is good as as wrath don't get me wrong i think i think everybody's great except for leo that's just <laughs> that's just how i feel <laughs> he's my favorite character and will continue to be even after I, this I, but 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 I kind of like the aspect of him being like, you know, the, the cheesy, corny leader and then Raph and Donatello just calling him out on it. You know, I like that aspect of him because that's kind of how I always saw Leo in the 87 series. That's how I always saw Leo was like the cheesy, corny leader that like somebody just needed to call him out on. And in this series, they're actually doing it. And I thought it was hilarious. Yeah. I, I, when, my, did, when do we ever talk like that? We're, we're heroes. It's yeah. Yeah, we always talk. My, my favorite Leo is is the TMNT TMNT movie uh, Leo. He was just I like him better. That's the kind of Leo that I want. That's the two K three wants what you want. Two K three one was good. Yeah. Either or, I like the TMNT movie one. I, I really do. I like I love the voice uh, on, on TMNT. Yeah. Boy, the. That's something maybe we could do someday. Is maybe we can get some of the voice actors from the two K three series on here. That'd be pretty cool. Yeah, if we could just get anybody by now, I'd be happy. <laughs> uh, hey, I'm friends with Stan Sakai on, on Facebook, so. Oh. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I'm friends with Brad. Brad, maybe that'll work out well. Yeah. Stan, Stan Sakai is is, is uh, really into snakes. He goes on these yeah. hiking trips. Every uh, I'm kind of Facebook stalking him a little bit, so I'm sort of like, ah, okay. he's probably not going to come on the show for sure now. But um, not that Ryan, edit that out. <laughs> <laughs> he, uh, he he he's constantly going. He goes on like on these hikes every day, and because uh, he lives like uh, on the base of a of like this this I guess small mountain or hill, uh, and he goes on these trails and he takes pictures <laughs> of snakes every day. It's crazy. That's Maybe cool. he's drawing a comic about snakes. Mm-hmm. Why not? I mean, you start comic about who, and I read it. So. <laughs> kung Fu frogs. Um, did you say Kung Fu frog? 
Kung, Kung Fu. Fu Frogs. Oh, yeah. Kung Fu Frogs. Okay, that yeah. makes a little more sense. Um, so, um, let's actually let's go into some some of the pros now. I mean, we've we've been talking about a lot of the pros. Um, we've been talking about the voice acting. Um, it is definitely for me, one of the highlights, um, it, they're, they're amazing. I mean, they're all amazing. Some of them are more amazing than others, but they're all great. I mean, they're, it is definitely one of the highlights of this show. Um, in addition, uh, the, the, uh, CG animation and the art style, um, I, uh, I'm really enjoying it. Uh, it's, it's, it's interesting because the show, as far as the content, uh, you know, the writing is not dark, but the environments are very dark. Yes. Um, the look of it is. Yeah. 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 So, um, really enjoy the animation. Um, as I mentioned earlier, the personality traits, um, are accentuated, uh, as they are in, in the 2K3 series. Um, you know, the, the original series, they, uh, the characters weren't as flushed out as, as they are. They were, they were more, um, kind of more closer to being all the same turtle, if that makes sense. Uh, their personality traits are definitely, you know, more specific, uh, in this series. Um, you guys agree? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, totally. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, characters, uh, bringing back, um, uh, some of the old ones while introducing new characters. Um, now granted, I don't think that they're, they're all hits. Um, <laughs> I probably could have done without, uh, spider bites. Uh, it was I like spider bites. Oh, I like spider bites. You like everything. <laughs> no, spider bites shows promise. <laughs> he shows promise. <laughs> yeah. He shows promise. I mean, come on. He's he's a good he's a good antagonist for Raphael. Is he gonna? In, were we gonna see spider bites again? Of course we are. Of course we are. We're yeah. gonna see snake weed again. We're gonna see spider bites. We're gonna see all of them again. None of them died. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. We're gonna see them again, and and see the giant monkey who escapes. Monkey. <laughs> he was nice. See, I I I I got I got emotionally involved in monkey. Yes, I, I agree. Did. It that episode definitely emotionally attached me to the content. Um, I cared about what happened to the characters. Right, and, and I I love what they did with April in that episode. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, they, I mean, she's the only one that understood him. And then Mikey, of course, has to throw like as he's taking him, as she's taking him out of the trash can. You know, Mikey has to go out and <laughs> chain him up. <laughs> uh, yeah. Brute. But um, I, I, I definitely got emotionally involved with it. I, I felt for the guy, man. Yeah. Um, and then uh, I'd I'd say that uh, one of the pros is the. The character-centric episodes, um, especially at the beginning of the series, because they're they're used as a means to introduce the characters to the new audience. Um, uh, right. You know they they're definitely flushing out these characters. Um, you know, as we talked about, you know, the, their personality traits, and they're doing that through these character-centric episodes. So um, I think that's a really great idea. Um, you know, that's a great way to introduce them to the new audience, to the, the new generation of turtle fans. Um, I would say though, that, uh, they need to spend a little bit more time, um, on shredder and the Krang, yep. um, and, uh, yeah. focus Mostly on shredder. their characters some more because I mean, like shredder, we have no, like if you're a new fan, besides the fact, besides, you know, Splinter talking about how, you know, Oroku Saki killed his wife and burnt down his house. Um, besides that, you don't know anything about him. Nothing. And he, I mean, that's, that's your main, like, villain yeah. in every series. Yeah. And yeah. they, uh, and the Krang, we don't really know anything about them except that they talk funny. Right. 
you know, it, it, I'm, I'm, and they're, I'm, but they're in every episode, right? We have not had an episode without the Krang. Is that I correct? One. I thought we had one. Yeah, I think the I think the Rad Brad one didn't have the Krang in it. Right. Okay. Um, but you know, I mean, they're, they're I'm I'm sure they're going to develop uh, Spl- um, Shredder's character or the, or the Stockman Pod episode. I think they were in the Stockman Pod episode. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, they're they're in certainly a majority of the episodes, mm-hmm. yet we hardly know anything about them. You know, we, we know that uh, they are doing something with scientists. We don't know what. So it has something place, to do with the mutagen. Place. We don't know what. That the place, that is this place. Yes, and they <sighs> talk very funny. They do. They do. Um... So, um, you guys have anything else you want to mention? Um, I, I'd like to see the turtles. I know they're developing the characters. I'd, I'd also like to see them a, a little bit out of, more out of their comfort zones. And uh, I like what they did uh, with Leo. One thing that I did like, one of the cons or pros that I did like with Leo was uh, that Snake Weed episode where um, the uh, the turtles were fighting Snake Weed and Donnie went to go save uh, April, and then. Um, the, Pretty uh, awesome way, too. Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely, and um, and then uh, they 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 start leading uh, Snakeweed to that one like generator thing, and then uh, Donnie just makes that comment in a little quip where he's just like, "That's insane," or that, or he says something about like that. Just that's that's it's actually kind of that's a good insane. idea. He goes, "That's insane," or brilliant, or brilliant, right? So mm, yeah, I yeah. thought that was kind of cool, and then the guys are kind of making do as far as. Until it goes without Donnie, so it, it just kind of played a little bit. I just, really like, I really like too how like they, the first time they ever fought anybody and they fought the Krang, they didn't know how to do it because they would never fought as a group before. I like, thought that, that was, was great too. Yeah, and that was really like they kept accidentally hitting each other, and and Leo stabs Rap in the shell. I thought that was great. Like that's something I wouldn't have thought of. Like, oh, obviously they've never fought like a common enemy before. They've just only fought each other. Right, and they all have authentic battle damage. I agree. Yeah. <laughs> One day we're gonna learn what happened to the front of Raph, like that little crack he has at the front. I'd like to. I'd like to hear what happened. So. Yeah. And are we gonna see more Spike? Man, I mean, come on. <laughs> um. Yeah, I don't know. We'll see. I mean, he's there, right? He's there. He's there. He's just. He's Raph's pet turtle. It just makes little, for now, I guess you know. Uh, but you know, and I also liked how you know they made Leo the leader, but obviously it was going to take him a while to actually act as a team. Leo's doing all the hand gestures, and Raphael, I don't know what that means. He's doing all the. It's like what? Yeah, that's yeah. true. That uh, yeah, that's a good point. You know, you maybe think, like, maybe you that's a, that's something that we should give a little bit more credit to, in the, in that. They notice little things like that. Mm-hmm. Um, well, that's what I'm saying. That's why I have so many more pros for this series than you guys do because they've noticed certain nuances like, oh, they've never fought enemies before. Oh, they, they haven't even acted as a team before. So, yeah. I mean, it, it, I, maybe we're being a little too critical because, I mean, it's not like every series has been perfect. I mean, the, the, the original series, for crying out loud, Raph was Donnie sometimes, and Donnie was Michelangelo, and Leo was, you know. <laughs> yep. So, I mean, like... Actually, but, actually, they did that with... They did that, and, and I saw it pointed out online. They did it with Leo, where Leo pulled his swords out, and and he still had his swords in his shell as well. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Um, like, there's Leo holding his swords, but they're also in the case on his shell. So, the, so uh, apparently some things never change. <laughs> I can't remember if it, I think it was the Metalhead episode um, where Raph and Leo are playing the little uh, hockey video game. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And, uh, you know, Raph wins as usual. Um, and, you know, they're just kind of, you know, he like puts him in like a headlock or whatever. You know, they're just kind of messing around. That was fine. What, what I thought was really cool. I don't know if you guys noticed this, but because I think then they walked over to see what Donnie was working on, and uh, they walk over and and Leo kind of like punches or he kind of elbows mm-hmm. Raph, and Raph's like you know he kind of looks at him, he's like hey you know 
that he just kind of like you know shakes it off or whatever. Like I thought that was really cool for some reason because they didn't have to do that. Like the idea was that Don, I think pretty sure it was Donnie that was talking at the time and he was, you know, explaining stuff to them. And, and, you know, meanwhile, they're just kind of in the background, like, not paying attention. Yeah. Like not, not yet anyway. Yeah. Well, that's Um, what I'm saying. Like they're, they're really playing on the aspect that they are teenage brothers and that's what teenage brothers would do. They would beat the crap out of each other just because no reason, like just punch out of nowhere. Yeah. That's what they do. Yeah. I mean, I mean, we do that. We still do that, where you just randomly punch your friend. Just like, boom! <laughs> what, what the heck? Yeah, it's like it. Remind me to sit on the opposite side of the couch from you next time. <laughs> what? <laughs> you are almost uh, a foot taller than me. I don't want to hear it. <laughs> so, no, no, that's true. I definitely don't want it to make it sound like we're all uh, negative about it because we're going to keep watching. We're going to... Um, you know, we're going to enjoy what we're going to enjoy and we're going to dislike what we're going to dislike. I like it. I like it. Yeah. And let's just be honest. This, this show would be boring if we all agree. So. Yes, absolutely true. Uh, can we, can we all, um, agree that, uh, some turtles is better than no turtles? Can we all agree that what? Some turtles is better than no turtles. Oh yeah. That's always the case. So Unless it's uh, Next Mutation. Well, next Mutation was perfect. Penis the pilot. We got, we got, we got, we got Penis out of Next Mutation. <laughs> I had to get that in there. Sorry. There be. Don't, don't ever be sorry about Penis the pilot. <laughs> Alex, one day you're just not going to see the sunrise. It's not going to happen ever again. <laughs> that, that's, the, that's, that's all of us, buddy. And uh, when I make it over to the other side, you know, the will be waiting for me. <laughs> <laughs> or for you, if you're lucky. Oh. Sure or for Mikey, one, if man. it's the, if the new turtle movie is going to make it out. <laughs> please, please, uh-huh. a moment to reflect. Uh-huh. Ah. <laughs> ah. <laughs> So as you can tell, um, this was recorded a couple of weeks ago, um, and a, uh, a couple more episodes have come out since. Uh, so uh, really quickly, um, due to the magic of editing, um, uh, I'd like to quickly talk about uh, the last two episodes that have come out. You know, it's interesting because when uh, the the last episode that we were talking about. Uh, we were talking about monkey brains and how we, all three of us felt that it was the, at that time, best in the series so far. Um, you move on to the next week with uh, Never Say Zephyr, and uh, it took it up to another another notch. And uh, um, with the inclusion of the Purple Dragons, uh, it was an amazing, amazing episode. Really enjoyed it. And then with the Gauntlet, it, I mean, it started off kind of slow, but um, by the it, it was it was really building up to the end, and with the with the Shredder's uh, appearance and uh, his fight with the turtles, especially when he landed on the rooftop and had that same iconic pose uh, from the original Mirage comic, uh, it, was, it was amazing. It was so good. So. I had to quickly mention those um, and uh, and give them their 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 rightful due. So let's get back to the show. Um, so uh, let's move on. Let's uh, we've got some uh, some emails I want to go over. Woo! Some uh, some questions. I feel like this is another two parter episode. See what happens when we take forever in between episodes. This keeps happening. <laughs> no, no, this one's not. Uh, this won't take too long. Uh, one of our, uh, faithful listeners, uh, Lewis, uh, he sent a couple of, uh, messages our way. Uh, Hi, Lewis. he wanted to, uh, say, uh, Hello. thanks for the awesome podcast. Um, and, Hello. uh, he actually has some thoughts on the Ninja Turtles script and he was, uh, he's got a, supplied a link for us. Um, so we'll put that up in the show notes. Um, so, uh, all our fans can check that out as well. And, uh, he also, remember when we were talking about the Legos, um, he, uh, did let us know that, uh, there, 
has been a Lego type of uh, TMNT set uh, once before, um, but it was a, a Mega Bloks um, set. So Legos, Lewis, I appreciate it. Uh, <laughs> I guess you said Lego like. Yes, uh, Lego like. Yes, he did say Lego like. So he knows the difference for sure. Until Lego, until until they go and make, make look. Nobody counts Mega Blocks. I appreciate the email. Nobody counts Mega Blocks. <laughs> Plain and simple. Legos are Legos. Mega Blocks are bricks. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's it was you know based off the uh, the two K three series. Um, they've got a uh, um, battle shell. Uh, set and uh, um, like a sewer set and stuff like that. So uh, interesting. Uh, thanks for sharing, Lewis. And um, yeah, we'll definitely put up uh, um, your link up in the show notes. Uh, another uh, email we got is from uh, listener Josh, and um, uh, he says. Uh, uh, Hey lads, uh, Josh here again. Uh, congrats on another awesome episode. Uh, shout out to Josh Darby. Was a double shout out to the first time he was on here. Yeah, ah. shout out to Darby. I follow the IDW comic religiously uh, through my. Uh, oh, though my uh, issue twelve was lost in the mail. Oh no. Um, no. Issue twelve. There's been seventeen, I think. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the, this was better than I. Did. This was this was from uh, almost a month ago. So, um, obviously, he prefers a hard copy instead of digital copy. <laughs> he does. Uh, he's uh, waiting for uh, 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 twelve, thirteen, and fourteen to arrive. But um, uh, he says uh, it captures the turtles in all their glory, uh, but spins the story enough to make it their own. Uh, I totally agree. Um, On what? That uh, the IDW series captures the turtles in all their glory, but spins the story enough to make it their own. That's what I keep telling you guys. Oh, I, anyway. I'm like halfway through the series, so you don't even know. You don't even know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you don't even nice. know, man. Um, uh, he oh says uh, yes for a big favor. He asked if uh, we could get him a copy of the. Uh, of the uh, leak script, I think we can do that. I think I know some people. Well, uh, Josh, if uh, the just 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 because you have been a loyal fan, I don't see why we can't do that. He's emailed us twice and he's given us content, so he we could do. Hey, hey, you know what? We gave him a double shout out on accident, so I want to hear it. <laughs> um, I'm just messing. I actually like the guy. He's been pretty cool. He he was the Reddit guy that I gave a shout out to, and then he I and see. then he wrote the question. So. He was uh, what a Ganoush, Baba Ganoush, or whatever his Reddit mm-hmm. name was, and yeah, he's the same guy. So we thought we had two fans, but we really just had one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he says he got his uh, greetings from the sewer shirt, uh, which he uh, shared with us in his last email, and uh, he's gonna post a picture of it up on uh, Twitter. So, which is actually from the uh, theme song I noticed from the opening animation. Mm-hmm. There you go. Yeah. Um. He says he's he's not a Donnie with tech. He's more of a Mikey with a skateboard and a chef's hat. <laughs> and a chef's hat. Um, he says uh, he got the Shell Razor, um, uh, the Nickelodeon version of the party wagon. Um, he likes the uh, Battle Shell name from the 2K3 series the best, though. Um, I, I like the ba- I like that. Yeah, what do you guys like best? Do you like uh, Party Wagon? Battle Shell or Shell Razor? Party wagon. I like Battle Shell. I like Battle Shell. Party Wagon. Party Wagon. Battle party Shell. Wagon. The Battle Shell was much better than the Party Wagon. They they demonstrated that in Turtles Forever when, no. when the TK3 I, rap was embarrassed to be seen in the Party Wagon. No, <laughs> as far, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not disagreeing. I'm just saying as far as like the name goes, I prefer Party Wagon over Battle Shell. Um... What, what, what just name alone? What do you like? Anyway, Battle Shell. <laughs> Fair <laughs> enough. Um, and uh, let's see. Uh, he says, uh, I'd have to say Raph's Shell Cycle um, is his favorite, but uh, that's because he rides a bike too. Um, or the powered uh, skateboard from the 80s series. Mm. That. 
That was pretty uh, cool. The little, with the little uh, hand uh, held, <laughs> one handed uh, little uh, <laughs> remote that st- mm-hmm. wasn't really remote. It had a wire that attached on the engine. <laughs> oh, that's man, excellent. Before wireless, man. Yeah. Um. So, uh, he actually. So I guess this goes into uh, our character spotlight. And he's actually supplied us with a character spotlight. Awesome. Um, his character spotlight is Zach, the fifth turtle. It's the uh, little uh, hockey stick wielding turtle wannabe. Shows up in yeah. season three of the uh, the two K three series, right? Two K three series, right? No, he was. No, the this is the original series. Is the original series? Original series. Okay. Uh, he showed up in a couple episodes. Yes, makes makes a handful of appearances in other episodes. Uh, at the end of his first episode, the turtles give him. Oh, that's right. They give him a little turtle com, uh, and make him the honorary fifth turtle. That's right, man. Um, he shows up to help the turtles, but causes more trouble than good. Um, yep. He does a Mag- totally know what you're about. <laughs> he does a MacGyver with a turtle come and sends the Technotrium back to the Earth's core. Wow, I remember that. That is great. Uh, and he says, "Look forward to another episode." Well, Josh, thank you so much. That's a good one. That's that a good is. one. That was man. That puts mine to shame. I don't know if I like Josh anymore. He put me to shame, man. <laughs> well, if that... you put you to shame, I really like Josh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, you know, as long as you listen to a Venus de Milo, which I refuse to let anybody do on the show because, like Peter Laird, I prefer to pretend that she never. <laughs> so, are uh, we doing our character spotlight? Yes, now? yes, uh, okay. guys, go right ahead. I'll go first. Uh, this it. one's dedicated to Darby. My character spotlight is Venus de Milo. Ah! <laughs> yes. So, so Alex doesn't have. Moving on, Alex doesn't have a uh, character spotlight. So I'll go ahead and move on. <laughs> My character spotlight. No, 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 no. Oh, Come no. on, we oh, gotta no. give Alex his, his time in the sunshine here. So, uh, <laughs> I'm just going to hit my mute button. Excuse me. That's yeah, fine. Feel free. Feel free. Feel free. Um, so, uh, for those of, uh, of, the, of those, the fan of the series that, uh, aren't, um, uh, that don't know who, uh, who Venus, uh, De Milo is, <laughs> <laughs> she was, uh, she was introduced, uh, in, Booyaka uh, shot button. The, <laughs> she was introduced in the next mutation, uh, which was a TV series. Uh, and, uh, she was basically, Brought into the series kind of as a love interest and just as a fifth turtle. Um, she was a uh, she just kind of a little background. She was uh, covered in mutagen uh, and was uh, she mutated into a turtle. She was swept away into the sewers and ended up in the Chinatown district. So she had no direct relation to the turtles in the beginning. Um, she was uh, brought up by a shinobi master. His name was Chung, and uh, he took her back to Shanghai. She was uh, she was actually all the way out in China, uh, and uh, was taught uh, you know the ways of shinobi. So not ninjutsu. She was taught the ways of shinobi. Shinobi. Mm-hmm. Is and, that related um, to Donatello Kung Fu? Donatello hate her instantly because she relies on magic, whereas Donatello is smart enough not to rely on. <laughs> correct. Correct. <laughs> well, Chung Chung was in possession of a mystical mirror. Okay. Yes, I which, remember the mirror. Right, which uh, kept the dreaded dragon lord and his minions and trapped within it. So it was kind of like a whole, was it Superman 2 where they were kind of in that, or Superman 1 where they were kind of, yes, thank you. So, um, uh, so the, you know, that whole thing uh, with the, the dragon lords and the mirrors and, um, of course, you know, Chung, uh, you know, was died like, you know, they all do. Um, and he was mortally wounded in his sleep and, um, the uh and kidnapping uh was his spirit was kidnapped um and it was taken into the dream world friend which was splinter et cetera et cetera et cetera uh on his deathbed chung revealed to mei pai chi uh <laughs> the, uh, Love the, tr- it. the true origin in new york so uh she you know they end up traveling and um so she ends up traveling to new york and uh, she met with the other four turtles blah 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 um, and, um, 
if you remember correctly, uh, she used the Shinobi magic to dispatch the uh, the Shredder persona from Rokusaki's mind. I don't know if anybody remembers that. Uh, to they went into the Dream Rail to to rescue Splinter Spirit. That whole thing. And did it? Uh, it I, I'm not sure, Darby. Did you did you like did you check out as soon as you saw Venus de Milo, or did you were you just like? Did I what? I'm did sorry. You... I, I I'm upset because yeah. you didn't do a character spotlight today. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, well, uh, did you check? Like, did you watch the next mutation, or did you just check out with when you saw Venus de Milo? I, you know, I didn't check out, but it's not like I was really paying attention to it when I kept watching it. I was just like, really? Really? The Ninja Turtles are on steroids. The boys acting is horrible. There's a Venus de Milo, which means the Ninja Turtles aren't brothers. And well, at least Donnie hates her, so that's a good thing. And which brings um, up, they, they made a point of, of stating that they, they could be brothers because of the future love interests. Uh, and, you know, they, they, they could. Which was her biggest sin of all. <laughs> she made the Turtles not brothers. I'm sorry. You just. <laughs> I, look, I, I, I'm not going to disagree with you. She, she's she's by far probably one of my least favorite characters of all time. But I feel she's not going to get spotlighted unless I do it. So I'm going to do it. And, and we're going to get her done. Keep fighting the good fight, buddy. You're doing right. it. So, um, yeah. So, <laughs> so she was basically brought in as a love interest um, for both Raph and Leonardo. So it was kind of like a little love triangle that they had going on. But, um... She uh, she's also made some uh, some appearances in the books as well, uh, so I'll make sure to get those over to you, Darby, uh, so you can kind of catch up on your Venus de Milo. Has she? Uh, I will set them on fire huh. and post it on Twitter. She 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 she, she has made a uh, um uh, uh, some uh, so made cameos in uh, some episodes. Uh, the Archie comics. Um, she's uh, she's made a, a couple of uh, there's a there's a comic. Uh, I think the, the the actual let me see here. I actually have it right here. the The name of the the I guess the uh, the issue is called Venus Venerations. And um, yeah, that's really all I have on that. She's she has made a couple of appearances uh, in, in the actual comic book series. Um, I didn't go all in to this uh, spotlight because oh, one thing um, that I I feel like this is one thing that maybe Darby would would like to watch. Uh, if he hasn't already, the 50th episode of Robot Chicken, she makes an appearance. And um, if you haven't seen it, Darby, this is one scene of Venus de Milo that you will love to see. So what I happens, might have seen it. Yeah, I she might makes, have. Go ahead, though. It's when she makes a, she makes a short cameo. It reveals that she was uh, kicked out of the team, and then she tries to flush herself down the toilet and drowned. <laughs> oh, man. Gosh, did I see that? I don't even know. If I, when was that? Uh, the fiftieth episode. It was season season three. It was season three, episode ten. Wow. Okay. So it's uh, the fifth episode one. is Moesha Poppins. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, she's she's made a she she has made some uh, some uh, appearances in the in the actual comics. She uh, she also made an appearance in um, TMNT Volume Three uh, as a uh, and uh, that's pretty much it. Oh uh, well, TMNT uh, Volume Three. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that would say uh, that one's got a checkered yeah. <laughs> history. It, yeah. That's and, when it, that series, uh, yeah, it's known right. for uh, jumping the shark a bit. So. Uh, alien morph into anything. It kissed Michelangelo, all that good stuff. Yeah, mm. um, and then uh, she also made an appearance in uh, the Power Rangers in space. Of course, which yeah. uh, that's when they had the crossover there. Yeah, that's when they had the crossover. Yeah. So um, that's all I have on her. I don't really want to get too much into her because um, that's uh, neither did the turtles. Um, but um, <laughs> oh. yeah, that's that's as far as I'm going <sighs> to go. I'm not going to torture Darby anymore, and uh, that's where I'm going to go ahead and uh, and and end it. <laughs> Very nice. Good job, man. You battled through. You get a little. Darby, I promise you that wasn't easy to do, but I thought <laughs> I, I'm I'm, real, I'm kind of disappointed that you didn't do a character spotlight. Today. No, so I want to like yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Let's let's just push on here. Okay, Darby. Right. Mine. Okay, mine is a character called Asuka. A S K A. Asuka. Asuka. Anyone? Anyone? 
Anyone remember that one? Asuka? Asuka, Asuka. Asuka sounds so freaking... It sounds very familiar. Asuka is a character appearing exclusively in the Super Nintendo's version of Ninja Turtles Tournament Fighters. She was the <laughs> female character in Tournament Fighters. Wow. That exactly. Is... <laughs> Apparently, the whole reason she's even in the tournament is because she wants to start her own dojo. She Her weapon of choice... Uh, let's see here. Uh, she has long hair, yada, yada, yada. Uh, apparently, she was a feminist. Other than perhaps being a feminist, due to some of her in-game dialogue, she is given little characterization. <laughs> like a lot of female Ninja Turtle characters probably should when you compare them with Venus de Milo. <laughs> but the funny thing about her... Okay, so her weapons, she wields a twin kunai. She also has the ability to conjure winds, apparently. Which is why butterflies fly around her when she does her moves. I don't know. The thing is, nobody knew why she was in the game. Like, who is she and what is her purpose here? And apparently somebody went through her coding while coding through, like, like while combing through her coding, they found out she was actually supposed to be Mitsu. Hmm. That is... Mitsu from the third movie. <laughs> exactly. Wow. So nobody that knows made why. Sense. They... Well, exactly. But nobody knows why they changed uh, uh, Mitsu to Asuka. But they said it's like probably the whole reason might have been because the third movie's dismal reception <laughs> may have uh, played a part. Makes sense. Yeah. 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 And apparently there was, um, there was a different version between her and the, the American version and the Japanese version, mostly due to her clothing, because one of her attacks was a flying butt attack. Outstanding. Yeah. yeah. No, right. Remember that? So, Awesome. Apparently, one of the big versions was in the American version, her butt is completely covered, whereas in the Japanese version, her cheeks are fully exposed. Uh, of course. And, and I just looked at the image because I was very curious to look. And yeah, I, I prefer the Japanese version. <laughs> <laughs> okay. She's not real. But uh, so, yeah, I just thought it was weird because I like, you know, I'm a, I'm a, you know, I probably play more video games than both of you guys put together. So I felt like no, no, no. No, Alex plays a lot. Alex, at least, see, Alex has a fiance, which means he has to like tend to her. Sometimes I have nobody to tend to, so I'm I, yeah. yeah I tend, Bigger loser. I, I play more video games. Moving right along. I disagree. That, that, that. But anyway, disagree. So, oh, and apparently, back in 1993, Electronic Gaming Monthly named her the number four woman in fighting. In video games, top ten fighting women in video games. She reached number four in 1993. <laughs> wow! It wasn't 93. I mean, oh, you, you had Chun Li, and then yeah, yeah, that's um, um, Sonya, Sonya Blade. Sonya Blade. Anyway, I don't know. She was number yeah. four, but I just thought it was funny that she actually started out as Mitsu, but then because the third movie was so god awful, they just made her a completely different character with no real backstory or anything. So that's my character spotlight is Asuka. I'm sad she didn't make it into anything else. I know. Yeah. I'm ashamed. Mm. Very cool. So um, Ryan. All right. So mine. Um, so I spent a long time thinking about who I would choose. Uh, and I've decided to go with Toka and Razar. Oh, nice. yeah! That's two characters. You're stealing one of my future ones. That is technically two characters. Yeah, but <laughs> when you see one, you see the other. Not necessarily. <laughs> um, so uh, Token Raza, they they definitely, um, uh, you know, they they have their biggest um, appearance overall in the uh, the Secret of the Ooze. Uh, from the uh, you know, 1991 film, um, Razar. Uh, well, I guess I should say what they are. Uh, Razar is a, uh, a wolf, a mutated wolf, right? And yeah. uh, uh, Toka is a mutated snapping turtle. Um, Razar was played by Mark uh, Gintler. And Toka was played by Kurt Bryant. Uh, and uh, they were both voiced by the same uh, voice actor, uh, Frank Welker. 
Um, so, uh, you know, Frank Welker, I mean, he's got a, a long list of, of, uh, of, uh, movies and television that he's, uh, um, performed on, but, um, you know, so in, in the film, uh, you know, this was, you know, this was the, the film's, you know, version of a, uh, of bebop and rocksteady essentially there was no bebop and rocksteady uh in the films so um this was uh, their version i guess um to have mutated animals to com to combat the turtles um alligator snapping turtle and apparently it's a gray wolf um so uh for in this movie it was tgri not tcri but uh, um, uh, let's see. It was uh, the foot and um, help me out. What's the uh, what was Shredder's uh, um, Han in 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 the uh, the movies? Um, uh, Tatsu. Tatsu. Thank you. Um, I, I I've had a couple at this point, so. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> um so anyway uh you know they they get the the ooze uh, and they get the the uh the TGRI scientists to uh mutate the uh the two animals I th- never really says why they named him that why Sh- shredder cuz shredder is the one that named him um but uh <clears throat> Uh, anyway, they battle through the uh, with the turtles throughout the duration of the film. They're set out um, into part of New York, and they destroy some of some light poles and stuff like that. And some old people <laughs> see them as they're getting in their like taxi. Um, but uh, they're eventually uh, defeated by the turtles uh, with uh, num nums. <laughs> with uh donuts that had uh anti mutagen ice cubes hidden inside uh but uh when they were digested they weren't um uh, i guess the the chemical reaction wasn't uh taking place fast enough, so the turtles had to use um uh fire extinguishers uh c o two fire extinguishers to uh um, speed up the process, uh, as you will. But uh, little known fact, um, Toka and Razar did make it into the original animated series. Sure did. Um, in uh, season seven, um, the episode uh, Dirk Savage, Mutant Hunter, um, Sure enough, uh, Token Razar. Um, the names were spelled slightly different. It was T O K A instead of double K, um, and um, R A Z A R instead of R A H Z A R. And uh, Toka was voiced by Rob Paulson, and Razar was voiced by Townsend Coleman, which Townsend Coleman was the voice. Of, of, anybody, anybody, Michelangelo. Come on, guys. Gosh. <sighs> anyway. Um, hey, hey, don't, don't get all like that. You didn't even know who Tatsu was. <laughs> I know who Tatsu is. I had a brain <laughs> fart. I'm serious. Tatsu? Um, yeah, you know who Tatsu? Who's Tatsu? Tatsu? <laughs> yeah. Like I said, I've had a couple. Um, so... Um, I guess uh, for me, one of my uh, uh, most, I guess, prominent uh, uh, um, memories of Toka and Razar are, are from the uh, uh, Turtles in Time. Turtles in Time. Yep. Um, the uh, the the Super Nintendo version specifically uh, when they were in the the Technodrome level. Um, they were like the the mini bosses uh, of that level. So that is actually the term mini boss too. Um, and they also made an appearance in the um, Nintendo game 
um, the Manhattan Project. That was Turtles 3, which I actually got a copy of uh, from a, uh, a friend and listener, uh, John. So um, maybe we can uh, uh, play that uh, at some point here in the, in the near future. So. Um, yeah, yeah, kind of getting ready for our eventual super awesome video game episode, uh, which we will get to someday. I Can't promise. we? <laughs> um, so that's uh, that's pretty much all I've got, um, guys. I think that's gonna wrap it up for episode eight. Man, it's been fun. It's been a good one. Just a long episode. See what happens about, when about we two hours? Take forever. See what happens when we take forever in between episodes. <laughs> <laughs> two hours is a good solid time. I mean, it's if we're doing it, you know, monthly, it's a, it's a good time. It was good enough for people to. I think I think the episode was good enough for people to make it this far. So thank you for making it this far. Appreciate it. Definitely appreciate all of our great listeners. Uh, and we definitely want to encourage more, uh, more feedback, uh, like Josh gave us, uh, and, and Lewis, um, definitely want to, uh, um, you know, invite all of our listeners, you know, don't, don't be shy. Send send in your, uh, your ideas, your thoughts. Um, definitely want to, uh, share them on the show. Um, don't be scared. <laughs> definitely. <laughs> Definitely don't be Disregard scared. Disregard Alex saying that. <laughs> yeah. I'm Hispanic, so I can talk like any minority I want. <laughs> um, so, uh, I guess let's go through the uh, the standard. Uh, uh, make sure you visit our website, uh, turtlepowerpodcast.com. You can comment on the, uh, the episodes there. You can also comment uh, on our Facebook page. Uh, facebook.com slash turtle power podcast uh, follow us on twitter if you aren't already um, i'm not quite sure how anybody could not be following us on twitter it seems like everyone is following us on twitter uh, but that's at tmnt podcast and uh, definitely write in uh, to the show um, uh, turtle power podcast at gmail.com and uh if you have, uh, um, you know, the, the inkling, um, uh, you can write us a review in the iTunes store. Um, let us know how we're doing. And, uh, yeah, I think that's going to be it, guys. Um, you have anything else you'd like to uh, leave the good folks with? Absolutely. Um, if you are from Heineken or Samuel Adams, uh, please consider <laughs> us. For, uh, for really? <laughs> wow. I like it. Wow. I like it. Three hey, um, booze and we get the booze. And uh, Alex, you are uh, embarking on, on a uh, another podcast, aren't you? I am. I am. Uh, you can uh, listen to me. I, uh, I am the host at uh, Rated M Gaming Podcast. Um, so uh, Rated uh, M because it's rated for mature. Please. Uh, if uh, if you are under the, the other side of Alex of 18. No booyaka shot button there. There is no booyaka shot button. <laughs> if you are under 18, uh, do not. Uh, well, consult your parents. <laughs> there you go. There you go. <laughs> Get your parents' permission. Granted, we're talking about Samuel Adams on this. So whatever. Anyway, yes. Rated M Gaming. Download it. Love it. Breathe it. <laughs> um, Darby? Uh, Bossa Nova. I got nothing. <laughs> I'm not on any podcast or anything. Love it, man. All right. Well, thanks again, everybody. And uh, song of the show. Any uh, any suggestions, guys? <laughs> uh, wow, didn't even think about that one. <laughs> Definitely did. Uh, all I got is uh, Darby spin that wheel. <laughs> 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 we already did that. Spin, I know. I know. Spin that wheel. <laughs> Don't even just, say it. You know, <laughs> the sound bite of me saying it over and over and over. All right. Again. What so I'm gonna do is I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna play no. some. Uh, a uh, a song from um, the score to the uh, to TMNT 
because uh, it's a movie that some people, I'm not going to say who, but some people need to uh, definitely See? check out and enjoy. Mm-hmm. It is a great film. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. 